I give these to uh, this to Mark Vega on the cruise. Do you know who Mark is? Mark's the editor of Wood Turning Magazine in the UK. Oh, there we go. So I've got gold and silver. This is a lot, lot thicker than real gold. A lot thicker. Okay. Real gold, that, that it will just fall about, fall apart in your fingers. Okay. So it's a lot, lot thicker. First thing we're going to do now. This has to be sealed. If you don't seal it, the glue will soak into the wood, and you'll lose its 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 uh, adhesive capabilities. Get rid of any dust, use your tool rest as a rest for your hand, and you're going to apply the glue, glue just like that. Don't paint it on, well you can, but, but get it around this edge first. Don't load your brush and start there, because if the glue rolls down and runs over this edge, it's just a pain in the ass to get off. Okay? It's not impossible, it's just a pain. So we'll try not to do anything to make the job more difficult for you. So white, latex based adhesive, and this this leaf does not stick to itself, unlike real gold, which you can burnish with agate and it'll actually stick to itself. This stuff doesn't, and it's very brittle. You cannot, um, it's made of copper and zinc. You cannot um, beat it or spread it. It's very, very brittle. Make sure you cover every single piece of that wood. If you miss a little bit, the, the leaf will not stick to it, okay? Um, so it might be even worth putting one coat on, letting this dry. It dries, it goes on as a milky colour, and when it's ready to apply the leaf, it dries clear. Okay? So I'm just going to go over that again. Just make sure I've covered every single part of it. And the leaf is a very, very definite um, statement. So it wants to be used sparingly. Irrespective of where you use it, I would use it sparingly. Uh, again, people have done a lot of leaf work and they overwork it. Good designers know when to stop. My, uh, I'm very, very fortunate in having a background in art and design. I did a foundation course, uh, a one-year foundation course at Manchester University, and then I did a three-year honours degree course in wood, metal, ceramics and glass. So I've blown glass, fused glass, slump glass, ceramics, I've done slip casting, coil pots, thorn pots, um, wood and metal, the metal. I specialised in design and making furniture, uh, one-off pieces of furniture with silversmithing as a subsidiary subject. And my, uh, my dissertation was on Japanese woodworking tools and architecture. Um, so I've got a good basic, I'm very fortunate to be a wood turner in this game with the background that I've got. Um, I'm actually running a class, and I'm not talking for business here, I'm just, just telling you what it is. I've found a niche in the market over here. Nobody, nobody is formally teaching design. Nobody. There's loads of guys can teach how to use the tools, but it's, you know, sometimes you look at the other pieces that they produce, what bin folk comes up with. There is nothing new in wood turning, I'll tell you now. Nothing whatsoever. You could not draw a shape for me that I hadn't seen before. But, um, Ben Fall, the work that he does is thin turned, pierced, and then airbrushed. Okay? Thin turning isn't new. I saw that 15, 16 years ago. People turning really thin stuff. Uh, Frank Sadal, the late Frank Sadal. He then pierced, pierced the piece, and then he airbrushed a tiger running down the side. The, of the, it was a tall vase, okay? Oh, and by the way, the pronunciation is vase, not vase, okay? A vase is worth far more money than a vase, okay? I'll just, just let you know that. Um, so, there's nothing new in wood turning. All Bin Fo's doing at the moment is turning really thin stuff, piercing it, airbrushing either butterflies or, or dragonflies on or whatever. But the design of the piece has got his oriental, his eastern culture into it, okay? That's how you come up with new ideas now. It's impossible to, there's nothing new from a shape form. You look at glass, ceramic, and you can get a lot of ideas for your forms of, uh, of those, of other mediums, looking at other mediums. As I said to, uh, I think it was Joe, your only limitation in wood turning is the equipment you've got, your ability with that equipment, and that. That's your only limitation. So getting back to this class, I'm formally teaching how to come up with new ideas. There's a lot of guys who can look at anything, copy it and turn it, or turn it and copy it, okay, or copy it and turn it. Um, 
but where the struggle is to come up with new ideas. And it's a process, it's a thought process. I studied it for three years in college. And so those courses are proven up really quick. The first morning you wouldn't be, uh, it, it would be done on paper. Going through the process, the thought process and the design process. It's a process, it can be taught. I cannot teach you design in three days, but what I can give you is the key to open up the door and you just go from there. And that's, those classes are building up really well because nobody's doing them. Nobody's teaching formally design and what the process is. Okay. I'm ripping this from the middle. I'm using random, what I don't want to do, oh yeah, you might want to, if you've got any grease or anything on your fingers, this stuff sticks to it. I do not want to use a hard, um, straight edge. I want to cut them, tear this from the middle, so I get random edges. So, your first piece, just drop it on. Try not to touch the glue. Just pop that out to there. Now you have to overlap this. It does not stick to itself. But the join, will, or the, leaf will, the excess leaf will break off exactly where the join is. That one up to there, and again just keep working your way around. You can use the square edges actually, this bigger one. If you have the square edge on the waist side, so you can get rid of that. When, you, when this leaf touches the, the glue, you are committed. You cannot peel it back off. Um, the, the, when I used to use real gold, I used to prefer transfer gold, okay, rather than, than uh, loose leaf. Transfer gold has a backing and it's, it's applied by static electricity. And what you can do is with the transfer gold, you can cut it into whatever sizes you want, put the leaf down onto the glue and then just peel the backing off. It's a very, very easy way of handling the gold. Pop down to there, just do this quickly. But again, this is a very, very definite statement. Can you see how bright that is now? That's why you don't want something that big, because your eye would be drawn straight to the leaf, and it would, it would cancel out the colouring. And I say try not to touch the glue with your fingers if you can avoid it. Um, it's, it's kind of sticky, this glue. And again, I'm putting that over there. I do not want to leave a tiny little bit to patch up. Actually, I'm going to put that one there. And as I said earlier, it is imperative that you make sure the glue has completely covered the wood. If you don't, and you miss a little bit, and you see a bit of bare wood underneath, it looks awful. But you can also make a feature of that purely by colouring this, sanding it, finishing it, colouring it, sorry, sand it, colour it, then finish it, and then put your, your sealer on top of that. Then, if you get a little tear in the leaf, the colour, the background colour comes through, it could be blue, it could be red, and that looks like a, a coloured vein in the leaf itself. So you can make things, um, we would call it a good bad, uh, where you made a mistake, but it actually, you're making a feature of a mistake. Okay, or a potential mistake, and that can look very old as well, uh, kind of antique. -y. This is the last bit on here. Design opportunities, that's exactly right. A design opportunity. That's just a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> Down here, design opportunity is bullshit, but it's good bullshit. This isn't being taped, right? yes, it oh is. my god. <laughs> You really want to come back here? <laughs> Are you sure they'll invite you? Well, now? I'll tell you what, now that that's on tape, um, Terry could probably bribe me now. <laughs> you will come back and you will work for this now that that's on tape. Okay, so I'm using a little bit of uh, uh, kitchen wall, just make a little pad, and I'm pressing the glue onto the surface. The glue will only stick to where the leaf, where the, the leaf will only stick to where the glue is. This is a soft, now we would normally use a sable brush, which is a very, very soft fiber brush, okay? This is a nice brush. The other one that works quite well is um, a lady's blusher. You know where you put blusher on? But I'd love to see oh, some of you guys go in and ask for a blusher brush, especially down south. Yeah, they can order them from Penn State. Oh, can you? Right, okay. One of the pen companies, and then they can uh, order them in and then make a handle for them. Right, I'm just flicking off the excess. 
And you could have a bit of paper here, collect that up and put these bits in a jar and then mix them up with the gold as well. And you can have a mottled effect, you can have gold and silver together, which can look really, really nice. That won't stick to the right. No. When it's dry, no. I'm just breaking off, bending this backwards and forwards and breaking off the excess, the excess leaf. Now it's a little bit, it's not a clean edge around here, but I'm going to do something, a very, very fine detail. Um, it's a design detail, it's very fine, and it'll just make a huge difference to this leaf. Switch that on. And just trail your brush in there, and that'll, it'll give it a brushed gold finish, or brushed leaf finish, it's not real gold. And that just takes a little bit of work to get rid of all the, all the little bits in there. This, now, I didn't sand that as well as I should have. The better you sand it, the more flatter a surface you're going to get. That looks mottled in places, okay? Um, but don't worry about that. It, it, it just depends on your finishing. You can never get it to look like a flat, polished bit of metal. It, it won't do that. You can do it with gold, real gold, but you can't do it with this stuff. So. I need to frame that. I've got the colour, I've got the silver, but there's nothing to tie anything in. It's kind of, it's, it's not tied in enough for me. So, what we do is, you see, a little sharpie pen, um, spindle gouge. I'm using just the wing of the tool. Okay, it's closed, just the wing. And I want to put a tiny, tiny, tiny little flat edge, a chamfer on there. Turn it faster, close the flute down. I'm using this part, the middle part of the wing. See how small that is? It's about, what, a 30 second at that. It's a detail, and that's all it wants to be. A small detail. Black Sharpie pen, drop that down again. And this is going to frame the, the silver and the colouring. That small black line just ties everything in, okay? It's a design detail. And sometimes I've actually put a black line around this edge as well. And what that does is again, it ties in the color and it binds, it kind of locks it into the, the leaf as well. Design details, just a detail. And that just frames it really, really nicely. Um, one last thing, can, can, can I, Borrow somebody's oil. I want to just put the oil finish on this, so I want to show you how it pops. And it, one, and it really does give it a lot of depth. Thanks for that. What color is perfectly fine for this. As I said, normally I would finish this like a car body, so it looked as if it had been dipped in glass. I showed another wood turner some of the colored pieces that I'd done. He didn't know whether it was wood, ceramic, or... Um, what a ceramic or something like that, I can't remember what he said. But anyway, he didn't know what it was, and then I said it's wood. And that will pass. I want my woodwork to be able to put into a wood turn. I want it to go into the, one of the galleries in, in the Bellagio. It's the numbers game. And you get this, people People go to Vegas to lose money. It's the only place I know in the world where they go, they'll save up to lose the money. Vegas is built on losers, not winners. You know what I mean? It's like mad, absolutely mad. And the other marketplace that I've got into is Taiwan, China. Um, that will be a huge marketplace for DVDs. Um, my DVDs have done very well. I've, I've grossed a million dollars selling DVDs. Nobody can touch me. Nobody can come anywhere close. And that, for this market, that's good sales. The oil on here really just starts to pop the grain. Just takes it down and gives it that, uh, that depth. Right, one more word that I'm going to teach you today. When I move that in different positions, I see the grain shimmer. The word for that is chatoyancy, okay? It's, uh, or the French pronunciation is chatoyance, okay? And basically, it's basically translated, it's two French words. Le chat, which is cat, and les yeux, which are eyes. Basically, it's cat's eyes, and cat's eyes reflect the light. Chatoyancy, okay? If 
It's something, she and seed is to do with grain and fibres, okay? Iridescent is to do with colours. So some people say, oh, it's really, <laughs> that wood's iridescent. It's not. Colour is iridescent. It's chatoyancy for fibre and grain, okay? And that's, that's worth knowing. That's a, a word which is worth knowing because it happens in a lot of different woods. Now, if I just, that's more or less finished, so if I take this out and I hold it to the light, you put no silver over your silver? No, no, I don't. Because it dulls it. You, it you, the, any silver you put on that, you lose its shine. I would rather leave it natural and leave the original shine on it. And that is what you can end up with. Okay? And the silver leaf or the gold leaf, whatever you're using, um, just again, it's a, you've got to get those proportions right. If the silver or the gold is too much, your eye would be drawn straight to it. I want the colouring and the silver to complement each other. Does that make sense? So guys, that's basically what you're going to do. I've got the glue, I've got the leaf, knock yourselves out. <laughs>